So let's talk about some black metal today. This is probably going to be my last review of 2023. Uh, and this album came out back in July. It's July 18th. So it's been out for a long time now. Um, but it's definitely been one of my favorite releases on the year. It was my one of my top black metal releases. Uh, but I've never talked about it on this channel. And I really wanted to talk about it today. Uh, just to kind of end out the year. I would say this is probably... If I were to do like a top 10 blended black metal death metal list um, and not separate them this would definitely be in it and what I'm talking about is the new Commodus album Wreath of Bleeding Snowfall uh, so I don't know if I've ever talked about Commodus on my channel I do own just about everything that he has released um, either on CD or vinyl from demos to splits that he's done uh, but this is, if you're not familiar with Commodus, it is a raw black metal uh, one-man band, I guess you could say. Um, and over the years, uh, I would say this is probably the first like raw black metal uh, artist, musician, whatever band uh, that I have really clicked with and really enjoyed and has been a huge fan of, of, of everything that he's released for the most part. Um... I own just about all of the demos that have come out uh, since 2018 like, time frames. Um, and he's got splits uh, on top of splits out there. I think there's one with Valak. Um, who else? Um, I'm blanking right now. I should have pulled them all off my shelf. But um, for the most part, I'm a huge fan of Commodus. Uh, it's, it's a very, um, I would say acquired taste in terms of the sound of the music and the type of music that is made um and i'm actually surprised at how much i've really enjoyed the stuff that uh, he has put out and what how just what i've listened to uh but his first album came out in 2020 which is self-titled Commodus, and that is the only one that i have not been able to get uh is out on i believe go to war x is who put it out I might be blanking on that. Anyway, it's hard to find. It's expensive. The vinyls are like $100 on Discogs. Um, but in July, he released a second full length. Uh, this is on Go to War X, and I was able to snag this CD. I've listened to this a lot, and to the point of where I loved it so much, I had to get the long sleeve and the short sleeve shirt from Night Shift merch. Um, so before I get started into the music, I wanted to show you guys the CD. Now, Go to Orex is a label that I typically don't pay much attention to. And the reason behind that is because some of the stuff is really hard to get. It sells out super fast and the resale prices are ridiculous. Um, and that is generally for the vinyl. I do have a Sanguine Relic vinyl that I've shown off on here. And that one I bought for retail or resale on Discogs for like 40 bucks. Uh, but now I'm seeing that same exact copy going for stupid prices. So their stuff is very like that cult kind of, of mentality where like the people just eat it all up and it's hard to get. Um, but this one has only been released on tape and CD. There is not a vinyl pressing of it yet. So I'm not too sure like if that's in the roadmap here. I don't know if GoWorks is planning on pressing that. I have no idea. I, I really haven't looked. But I did manage to pick up the CD and it's got this awesome booklet with some of this awesome artwork here that is also on this shirt. Um, and then on the back, there's the goat, which the goat is on the back of the t-shirt and on the back of the shirt is a uh, commonest. Uh, I'll link in the description so you guys can see these shirts. But it has a really nice booklet of the lyrics and pictures. Really nice quality. In terms of like a CD booklet, they did this right. Um, 20 pages of just really nice high quality booklet the cd itself this is what's on the back of my shirt currently right now um here's the back of the cd and then there's a little bit of a hidden gem on this cd <laughs> um if you take the tray table off it has even more artwork underneath it there so a uh, really nice cd it sounds fantastic and i think this is probably one of the most one of the most listened to black metal albums along with you know those several like the nine others i talked about in my video that I've listened to a lot this year. Um, so, the, like I said, it's a bit of an acquired taste. Commodus is from Australia, and this is pretty much war-themed, uh, pretty much uh, war-themed, like, in this in the wintertime. Um, so it's, it's about um, life and death, essentially, is what I was reading. It's like a, 
It's a full moon winter saga. Narrative fantasies of bloodied battles, legendary dreamscapes, ferocious beasts, violence, redemption, and survival shaped into eight tracks which both condense and elaborate on the style honed over the prior nine releases. So I would agree with that. Uh, this is very much a Commodus album. The sound of his previous releases are very much here. I would say in regards to the first album, that first album was a little bit more of aggressive like almost it had like a, almost like a hardcore punk style to it that i really enjoyed it's definitely raw black metal it's got that raw production doesn't sound that great but if that's something that you enjoy you'll like that um and that rawness is still very much here on this album but i would say the production is a little bit cleaner a little bit nicer well better i wouldn't say nicer it's got a very much a a sludgy raw sound to this uh there's a lot of elements on this album there's a lot of things going on in this album i would say a lot more than than previous uh releases that he's put out um several times i listened to this just on the cd and in my car uh, but when i put my headphones on one day i heard so many other things going on in the background of the music that i didn't quite pick up while listening to this on my stereo and i think that that alone in itself says this is something that needs to be listened to several times because you catch something new every single time you listen to it uh, but there is very much that raw sound that he has in previous releases the same war style of vocals that he has which is just very raspy screamy um vocal style uh and that is pretty much the whole entire vocal style throughout the whole entire album there's not much variances around that so there's like no cleans or anything like that um but Commodus has a very distinct, unique vocal style that I actually really, really enjoy. Some people find it to be a bit of a deterrent for his music, but I like it. It reminds me of that war metal screaming that you often hear in, in that type of war metal sound, like blended in to raw black metal. Uh, and that's something that I've gravitated towards to when it comes to this style of music that he writes. So this album, I think, is miles ahead of the first album i really enjoyed the self-titled release that came out a couple of years ago i still take it off the shelf and listen to well i still listen to it digitally i don't own it physically i'm just so used to saying take it off the shelf like that's my term that i use uh, but digitally i still listen to it but this album took me by surprise at how much more i enjoyed it there's a little bit more variances in here um, and when you see this winterscape you expect it to be kind of atmospheric black metal almost like that you know that frosty atmosphere and that definitely is not the case for this uh there is that that atmosphere of like the war that you're that it's ensuing and like what this whole album is and the theme around it you definitely get that while you're listening to it but there are very much uh stronger elements here of more of like that hardcore punk sound even sludgy doomy's uh style of riffs very beefy and chunky bass lines um, and guitar riffs uh, so it's it's an interesting listen like you it's not as uh, straightforward raw black metal album uh, that I would listen to like uh, Lamp of Murmurs some of his first releases or anything like that or even even Sanger Relic like Sanger Relic is very raw black metal so uh, that is some of the things that I wanted to call out I would say it's a very uh, unique listen and it's a very acquired sound that you may not enjoy right away, especially if you're not familiar with Commodus. Uh, but for me, it clicked right away. And <laughs> this album is very, very good. There are times where I've gotten goosebumps because I it just goes into, like, you almost get into, like, a trance while you're listening to it. And like I said, it, each song stands out alone. There's a lot of variances throughout the songs. And yeah, the vocal style does get repetitive, but not in terms of like the musicianship, the guitar writing, those aspects, they're very unique across every song while still maintaining the same sound across the album, if that makes sense. Um, but he's got that iconic raw guitar riffs, like that deep war style of drumming on here. Um, and then his like barking raspy style of vocals uh, that's still very much present that's still very much common this is sound like unique sound that he's known for um, but I would say this is a much more I guess cleaner I don't know if that's even the right word production style like I mentioned it's a little bit more crisper sounding uh, maybe just mixed better I'm not too sure like what how to really say because like when I say clean production you're going to assume like it's super 
clarifying. It's definitely not. It's still got the raw black metal sound to it. You still have to really pay attention to what's going on in the distance of the music. Like there are guitar underlying guitar riffs on here that are not as distinct and not as present in the mix unless you're really paying much attention to it. Um, but the vocal style, the vocals are very present. Uh, it's not like very raw where you just don't know what's going on uh, or anything like, like not like Black Solace is what I would compare it to. But it isn't as heavy and fast paced as the first album. I would say the first album was super fast paced, just crushing heavy, aggressive the whole entire time. This has a little bit more of a variance where there's build up and, and slow down, uh, chunkier style of riffs, uh, especially on this song, uh, Shelter Within a Whale's Carcass, which is just an awesome song title. That is also one of my favorite songs on the album. It's a little bit more of a slower, slower pace, like almost doomy, sludgy, like hardcore sound that I'm getting, but it does pick up towards the end. It just has a really heavy, fast paced riffing at the end of the song. And there's also like a Nirvana riff in here uh, from the song In Bloom. It's very subtle, but as soon as I heard it, I caught it and I was like, okay. Uh, but it goes well. So that's kind of the unique aspect of this song. Um, the album starts off awesome. And the album, op the song opener, In the Moonlight, is a fantastic song. Um, it's just heavy and doomy again, like that doomy, sludgy guitar sound down here. Uh, his growling deep vocals. Um, and then while maintaining that raspy scream that he does. Um, but it almost has a bit of like a thrashy vibe to it well. So there's a lot of things going on on this album that is a lot more layered than the past release. Um, Sky Fortress, which is the fourth song on here, is a little bit more of like a black gazy song, like a black shoe gazy song. I guess that's the right term. Um, it's just a little bit more slower. You kind of get put into a trance. Like it's a very relaxing slash cathartic song. Um, it's got this very, uh, like cathartic underlying guitar riff that's almost feels very rock, like heavy metal rock inspired, which a lot of those guitar riffs on this album sound like that, uh, which makes it pretty unique. Um, not a whole lot of that fast paced trim picking that you might expect, uh, within a, a black metal album. Um, for the most part, I would say this album definitely has its flaws in that like I said, if you get tired of the like same vocal variance across the whole entire album, if there's not a whole lot of change in the vocal style, that I can see why that would bother you. Um, but in terms of length, I, I think some of the songs are just a slightly a little bit longer than some people might expect. Like the first song is six minutes and 54 seconds, so almost seven minutes. And the final, there's this seventh song on the track, A Belling Colossus Silhouetted Within the Blizzard. <laughs> These song titles are awesome. Is over seven minutes long, but that's a fantastic song. It's an epic song. It, it is fantastic. Uh, I don't think that it's too long. Um, it ends with just an, a really awesome like guitar solo. It's very melodic sounding and a very ferocious song. So, uh, but those are the things that I would say maybe some people might complain about. But I would say in terms of of length of this album, it is only 45 minutes long whereas the first album was over an hour and I think that was probably like just really too long in my opinion so I think the the length overall is very good for this album like he kind of fixed that from previous album um the other thing that I really wanted to call out is is that I, I found I found that this change of pace to be better like a little bit more variance ended up being a good change for me and some people may not have liked that they might have really just liked the straightforward ferocious raw sound from the first album and this one might just be a little bit too variance and have too much stuff going on that you're listening to um, however I found that that to be a good thing for me uh, and what I enjoyed the most um, but overall this has been such a fun experience to listen and like every time I listen to it I hear something new uh, just very unique style of writing and with raw black metal I tend to get bored with it because a lot of it just sounds the same as a lot of it's very repetitive and this just threw a curveball out there and was like okay this is this is really well written in my in my opinion so a fantastic album I hope that you know 
you check it out. The CD is around. It's in distros. I don't, I'm pretty sure Gordo War X still has it on their website as well. Um, I do hope that there is a vinyl pressing coming soon. I would love to have this on vinyl. Um, just, I mean, just to have in the collection, but for now, the CD is okay. And like I said, these shirts can be found on Night Shift Merch if you're in the U.S. I'm not too sure about European or, or other side of the country, so don't quote me on that, but it is awesome. It's got the Commodus and, like, the album artwork, and on this side it says Commodus. Like, in terms of long sleeve metal shirts, this is by far my favorite one in my collection right now. I have several that I've worn over the last couple of episodes I've put up here. And in Florida, where I live, it doesn't stay cold for very long. So I take full advantage when it's cooler out to wear these shirts because, man, I absolutely love them. So it's a really nice shirt, really nice quality. Night Shift merch does. They release good stuff. I, I, I'm pretty sure they printed this. I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on that. But I got it through Night Shift merch. So it's a great shirt. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and I've seen, so I've seen Eric um, from High Defamation wear this shirt. And then I also saw Matt from Altars of Madness had it on. And I was like, fuck me, I need to get that shirt. Because <laughs> I just, I liked it so much. So anyway, I've gone off on a tangent now. So that is all that I have. Again, this is probably my final review of the year. I don't think there's anything else out there. I mean, yeah, the new Crypto is out. But I'm going to link uh, Simon's review of it from Heavy, Heavy, Heavy Metallurgy. Um, definitely. But in terms of year-end stuff, I, I think I'm done for a while. Uh, new stuff will be coming in 2023. A lot of stuff's already being announced, so I'm super excited. So check out Commodus. Let me know what you think. Um, again, unique listen, acquired taste, I will say, but I absolutely love this album. So I will see you guys in the next one. <laughs>